welcome back to the channel today we are going to start going over some basic equipment and i realize i have a dozer sitting behind me and most likely your employer is not going to start you on a dozer if you're new to the industry but there's a good reason i'm doing this i actually had a request for a dozer tips and tricks video so i decided we're just going to go ahead and combine it with a how to run a dozer video so let's start by looking at the dozer all right so let's start by taking a look at the actual machine this is a cat d5k uh, it is the lgp configuration so generally you're going to have three separate configurations when it comes to dozers lgp stands for low ground pressure it's going to have the widest tracks and it's just to distribute the weight so that you don't sink down in soft areas the disadvantage to an LGP the wider your tracks are the more undercarriage where you're gonna get if you are unfamiliar with dozers everything here is known as the undercarriage so the tracks the rollers the sprockets all of this is the undercarriage and it is one of the most if not the most expensive thing to maintain on a dozer because everything on that moves and everything on that wears so the the idea as a dozer operator is to balance minimizing wear and tear but at the same time being efficient we'll get into that here in a minute so all that to say going back to this this is an lgp it has the widest track the next step down would be a wide track which would be designated instead of the lgp up there it would say WT and then the regular standard track gauge is known as an XL or extra long carriage it's gonna have smaller track pads but the track base itself the actual length of the track on the ground will be slightly longer this dozer has a six-way blade as opposed to uh, a dozer that's made for hogging materials only gonna have a four-way blade and I know this is gonna shock you but a six-way blade moves six ways so it's gonna move up and down down, it's going to pivot left and right and then it's actually going to tilt from left to right we'll get into that when we get in the cab a four-way blade is not going to have the ability to angle the blade this way it's only going to be able to tilt the blade um, left and right and then obviously up and down so the first thing we need to talk about when we're going up to a dozer if we were to start this for the day the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the fluids and these are generally pretty straightforward on dozers there's nothing too crazy too tricky gonna pop open our engine compartment and I've already done all of this but this is our oil dipstick here um, you've got fuel filters fuel water separator right here which you don't have to check but it's good to know where they're at and what they are so you're gonna check your dipstick first thing if you climb up on top you'll see that there's the access point for the radiator to check the coolant level the coolant level is fine uh, if for whatever reason you need to blow out the air filter for the engine that's located there so once you've done that the other fluid we're going to check is our hydraulic fluid which is back here there's a tiny sight glass I'm not even going to try to let you guys see that because it's almost impossible uh, even in person here you always want to park this thing in the light or shine your flashlight from your phone on it so you can see it but that needs to have hydraulic fluid visible in the sight glass to run this machine on this particular machine don't get hung up on the location but more the thing your master and the way I always remember this and I know I know the letters aren't right, but the way I remember it is O for off and I for engage. I know engage doesn't start with I, but hey, it sounds good and it works and I remember it every time. So master needs to be on, which it was. The final thing you're gonna do before you are ready to run this machine is you're gonna grease it. And uh, grease needs to go wherever there is movement. So all of this stuff here needs grease, everything up here needs grease. And you do that by using these little zerk fittings, which is buried under grease, and I'm not about to stick my finger in there. You can see this one a little better. You can see the little nipple sticking off of there. That is a zerk fitting. Your grease gun pops right on that, and then you give her a couple of five pumps or so, and you grease that joint, and then you move on to your next one. This whole machine would need to be greased before we were running it for the day. If you're ever curious if you found all the grease points, look for this chart right here yes very dirty most machines will have this chart on them and it's going to tell you all of your grease points so you can see the little grease gun here in the diagram and it's going to point to all the various grease fittings there are in this machine so you can see this one's pointing up here for engine oil that's not a grease point we want to look for little grease guns and you can see grease guns all over the place this is if it had a winch package on it the winch would have a grease point if it had a ripper package on it these are all the grease points on the ripper so that's a very very good thing to know 
that this exists. It's gonna be located different places on each machine, so you might have to peck around for it a, a little bit, but it is there. While we got this compartment open, you got your hydraulic oil filters and then you have your in-cab air filter. So that is how you start your day on a dozer. That's kind of the prep work to generally get rolling for the day. So we're going to shut the camera off for now. I'm gonna pop inside the cab and we'll start going over controls and then we'll get into some tips and tricks for getting into a dozer. So we'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, welcome to the inside of the dozer. Now, I, I realize, I fully realize that you guys are going, whoa, 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 that's not the same dozer, this is not a D5, and that's not even remotely close to the same job site we were walking around earlier. Well, that's what you get when you subscribe to a true film professional. Uh, what happened was, in the D5, I thought I hit the record button on my GoPro when I was making this video. I didn't, and I didn't realize it until I was home and I no longer had access to that dozer. So part two, the inside of the cab, uh, we're actually in a case. This is a case 1150 dozer. It's the next step up from a D5. So this would be the equivalent to a D6K. But we'll just go through the cab of a dozer really quick. So right here at the, the front, we've got our parking brake, uh, front and rear lights, front and rear wipers. These are gonna be buttons to navigate your menus up here on the screen. This is gonna be your hydraulic lockout. And this button right here is kind of specific to case dozers. This is the way they have differentiated the controls on your right-hand joystick. So uh, let's go to the joysticks first. So uh, before we talk about that button. So moving down, this is equipped with a Leica GPS system. That's what this screen is. Uh, normally this screen is not here, but because of this unit's equipped and I've got the, the equipment on site, we have the screen in it. Right here is what's called your decelerator pedal. Uh, bulldozers work the opposite of cars. Instead of having a gas pedal, you actually have a slowdown pedal. It's easier mentally to think about it as working like a brake, but this actually slows the engine RPM down because most of the time when you're pushing, you're running full RPMs, you just wanna slow down whenever you're going from forward to reverse or reverse to forward. So that's why they have a decelerator pedal. Uh, moving over here to the left, we have a hand throttle here. So whenever we're running, that's gonna be full bore and then you're gonna use the uh, foot control to control your throttle. This is your forward reverse. And then if you wanna turn the dozer to the right and to the left, that's what that's for. Uh, this is gonna make the top speed of the dozer go faster or slower. And then you've got your horn. Then moving over here, this is your blade controls. So up and down for the blade, this is going to tilt it left and right. And this is going to angle the blade left and right. Now these buttons here is where we get back into the button on the dash up there. So when we're not in GPS mode, when we're in regular dozer mode, uh, this button's not gonna do anything. Uh, this button is going to let the blade, the blade float. And this button is going to shake the blade, so it's gonna shake the material off of the blade. When we flip this button here, that tells the computer that these two buttons no longer do their normal functions. Now they control our GPS up and down. And so what we would do is, let's say we needed to undercut an area, the, the, the prints show that we're at grade, but we wanna undercut it by five tenths because there's some bad material. So what we can do is instead of having to go into the menus and go down and do all of our stuff to go take our grade down by five tenths, instead what we can do is we can go over here and we can go pop, 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 and that's gonna drop our grade down. Or likewise, if we wanted to fill that area with some sand, we can pop, 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 go up five tenths, and that's how you can adjust on the fly when you're using GPS. You can adjust uh, how deep or shallow you're cutting. So those are the basic controls of a dozer. So I'm gonna get this thing fired up. Uh, we're actually gonna pop the windows open most likely because it is bright as crap in here and you're not gonna be able to see anything outside. But once I pop the doors open, we will get the camera set up and I'll show you some basics of running a dozer. Oh, by the way, up top here, you've got your radio and climate controls. That's about the only other thing I was gonna show you. So yeah, give me just a couple minutes and we'll meet you back here and we'll start running a dozer. So I wanted to talk about just some kind of basics of running a dozer. Um, dozers are one of those things that 
you initially see them on a job site and you're like, you know, I bet that's pretty easy machine to run because you just set your blade height and you just go. And in reality, Dover is one of the hardest machines on the job to run because you do it entirely by feel. One of the things you develop, and it just comes with seat time and everyone has to go through it, is you develop an ass level. You can figure out where a level is by what it feels like in your ass. And so one of the first things I'll tell you when you get into a dozer is find a spot that you know is level and then go park that dozer up on that level spot and feel that in the seat. Get used to what it feels like when you're running level because then you can start to feel when you're leaning off to the right or to the left or when you're starting to run downhill or when you're going uphill, that's all in your butt. That's where you're feeling that. That's where you're gauging what you're doing. And the only way to do that is to just spend a lot of time in the seat. So that's the number one thing I wanted to tell you. The second thing I'm gonna tell you is, you're gonna notice all dozer operators, this hand is pretty busy. And it's because if we were to just, let's, let's do it because we got a big backyard to work with here. Let's say we just wanted to run this out level. So we're gonna, you know, that feels somewhat level. I can, I can personally tell I'm going downhill slightly, but it's close enough for, for the example. We're gonna set our dozer blade height and we're gonna leave it and we're just gonna start going forward because that's gonna give us a nice even path, right? Well, what's happening is I'm cutting on this side and now once my track falls into that cut, the machine starts to lean, which means the blade's gonna start digging more which means the machine's gonna start leaning more. And you're seeing, we're starting to dig pretty hard on this side, and we're barely even touching the ground on this side. That's why this hand is so busy, is because if you just leave the blade alone, you're not going to cut level. The machine is going to follow whatever grade you're cutting, and so it's going to slowly multiply whatever error you're doing. So let's do the opposite here. Let's push this pile over and say we want to go just slightly uphill. So I'm going to get some dirt loaded on my blade here. And now I'm going to put a nice little gentle uphill on it and we're going to cat forward. What happens? Now my tracks are going up, which you notice my blade is going to go up as well, which means the angle is slowly increasing. And next thing you know, you're headed for the moon. So it takes constant adjustment of the dozer blade in order to run the machine. Uh, every machine's a little different. They all will uh, will be a little slower or faster on the response. Uh, I like Case when it comes to this machine size because the competitor, which is the D6K, uh, the K series was notorious for having super jittery, jumpy controls. And so instead of being able to do nice, smooth, fine grading movements, with that K, you barely touch it and the blade's just jumping all over the place and it makes fine grading really difficult. You can do it, absolutely. It takes a lot of time and a lot of experience in that machine to get really good at it. So on dozers, you actually want the hydraulics to be just a little on the slower side because instead of making really fast jittery movements, which shows in the grade, you can make these nice smooth adjustments and the ground's gonna undulate and it's gonna look very natural and it's gonna, it's gonna make for a much better experience on the dozer. So let's do some grading and as things come up, I may talk you through them, I may not, we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of play it by ear. I gotta get rolling on this job. So uh, the goal on this job is I've gotta move a bunch of this material around the side of the house here to backfill around this retaining wall. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle my blade this way and kind of carry that dirt as I turn the corner because if I didn't angle my blade, it would all run off the side. And then once I straighten out, I'm gonna angle that blade back to where it's nice and straight. And I'm not doing a very good job right now uh, because I'm concentrating on making a video instead of actually dozing. So I'm gonna pay attention for a second here.
so there are certainly jobs where you're just trying to book and get it done and you're going to be you know full speed the whole time but to do that for the entire life of the dozer uh, you really really diminish the life of the undercarriage and so when it's possible when you can chill out a little bit you definitely want to chill out because that will save you thousands of dollars in maintenance costs on replacing rollers and sprockets and your track chain and just all of the really expensive stuff on a dozer. another one out here that has no green ribbon on it and that's because that area is high so I'm gonna back drag some of this material out push it all that way just to push it all this way so you always want to kind of plan where your material is going to go in, going to be going and then also when you're using GPS which we're not on this job but when you're using GPS that's the other reason you want to plan is because if we have a cut over here and we have a low spot a fill area over there you want to generally windrow that material that way and you're leaving light nice clean passes where you start 
and the material's getting pushed over into the fill area and it saves you a ton of cleanup having to come back and get windrows and everything. So you always want to kind of be strategic about, okay, where does this dirt need to end up when I'm done? And we're going to approach it from that way. So for instance, I know that all this material in the backyard is probably going to get used up on that retaining wall. And so that's why I'm starting here in this corner. I'm going to push that way. I'm going to get our piles on that side of the job and push that way. So just be strategic in a dozer. I don't really have a ton of dozer tips and tricks. Really what it boils down to in dozers, let me put myself in neutral here. The biggest thing in dozers is seat time. It's getting in the dozer, figuring out what level feels like, and then figuring out just feeling those pitches and rolls so that you can figure out what your blades do. Everything happens on a delay with a dozer because you're tracking over the area that you're pushing. So for instance, if there's a big mound in front of me and I push through it with my dozer blade, I'm tracking on the smooth area that my dozer blade has created. Now likewise, if I jump my blade up real quick while we're catting forward, that's gonna create a speed bump. But it's gonna take a second for my tracks to get to that speed bump. So you're running a dozer on a delay, and that's something that comes with time too, that you're watching your blade, and you can see the visibility in dozers is not very good. Everyone thinks that the visibility is great, and that's how these operators are able to do so much. No, you can only see the corners of your blades and the backside of the blade. It sucks, visibility is terrible, but you learn to read the dirt. And so what I'm doing is I'm watching the corners of my blade to figure out where they're at in relation to that dirt so that I can get myself set up right. And then when I make my adjustments, I know just from seat time roughly how long it's gonna take for my track to get to where I just raised the blade. And so if we're wanting to put in a swale that curves, I know that I'm gonna make a little adjustment as I'm tracking forward, but then as I track forward onto that, I'm actually gonna to have to adjust my blade back this way and back down a little bit because now my tracks are running up on that. And so that just takes time. And I do want to be very forward with you guys. When you get in a dozer for the first time, you're going to spend the majority of the day frustrated. Take it slow. Dozing is not about being the fastest guy out there. When you get good, absolutely speed comes. But when you're first learning a dozer, there is nothing wrong with me dozing at this speed right here. That is a perfectly acceptable speed for your first day in the dozer. And you can see I got lots of time to adjust and get everything right and dialed in. And I'm not gonna go blow some crazy thing out of the water because I'm screaming at 15 miles an hour. No, this is all gonna happen very slowly. And if I make a mistake, I can just come back, I can reset, and then I can go back to dozing at a nice leisurely pace. Now. Is that gonna let you keep your job if you're five years into your career and you're still dozing at the speed? Absolutely not. Is this an acceptable speed for some guy who's never been in a dozer before and learning? A hundred percent. And if you have a contractor that disagrees with that, go find another employer. Dozers are, are just, it takes time and it takes patience. So don't get frustrated. That's my biggest piece of advice. Stick with it. It will come with time. And dozers are also one of those skills. It's kind of like riding a bicycle. You never forget how to ride a bicycle, but you're definitely better at it when it's fresh. And with a dozer, it's the same way. Like right now, this is my first time really running a dozer on a job in probably, oh, three years, if I had to guess. And so I am rusty. I'm gonna have more hoopties. And when, when I say hoopty, you're gonna hear that term all the time when it comes to dozers. Uh, hoopty is basically where you raise the blade up and then lower it down and as your tracks go over it, you create these speed bumps because your blade is following that. I'm gonna have more hoopties than back when I was running this full time, every day, five years straight. Uh, that's just part of it. The skills get rusty and it takes some seat time to get that back. So just be patient, stick with it, it'll come to you. Uh, as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll absolutely do what I can to get you some answers and get you some help. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.